Tyler here with GP Knives, and we're back again for the Week 51 Weekly Update. We'll start out this week with restock on the Spyderco Indella in K390. K390 is a highly wear-resistant tool steel, so this knife is going to hold an edge for a very long time. It's got good toughness, but not a high level of corrosion resistance. So you can see it does come factory with a light coating of oil, and this is going to be recommended for preventing corrosion over the long term. It's a nice mid backlock design. As you can see, it's easily operated with one hand. Fully ambidextrous with the Spyderco round hole, four position clip, and mid backlock. And then you have a nice cyan blue FRN. Full handle with a nice grip on there. Bi directional texturing for good traction in the hand. And as you can see, it's very similar in size to the Paramilitary 2. A little bit shorter in the overall cutting edge and blade length, but you've got a very similar profile overall. Functional grip area is going to be very similar. Even factoring in that choil, you can see the grip area matches up very nicely there. So great lightweight EDC with plenty of cutting edge for performance. A little bit thinner blade stock than the PM2. So you can see it's going to be a nice slicer, both with a full height flat grind. The K390 family of knives is a regular production. And the Indela falls right between the Delica and Endura, which is what gives it its name. And then we've got this, which is a distributor exclusive paramilitary 2 classic PM2 design with a limited run S35 VM blade and flat earth brown G10. Otherwise, you're looking at the standard PM2 construction G10 with stainless liners, compression lock mechanism, four position clip, and of course, Spyderco round hole deployment there. So very popular EDC. And we'll jump right from the PM2 here to the new Lion Steel Mito. This is going to be a great slim EDC that is still robust enough for serious use. We've got a similar blade length with a bit more cutting edge on there. Blade is going to be Bowler's M390. And as you can see, it's got a nice thick stock with a high height saber grind on there. So a bit more robust than the PM2. Functional grip area is going to be a little smaller. You can see the main part of the handle there is going to be fairly similar. You do get that extra bit of choil with the PM2. Of course, the footprint. It's going to be a bit smaller, but generally speaking, it's going to carry in a similar way to the PM2, maybe just a little bit heavier. And we're going to do a full overview on this coming soon, so keep an eye out for that in the next couple of weeks. This knife does come in several variants. It's a ball bearing flipper with removable flipper tab. This one has black canvas micarta with a G10 floating backspacer. They are all titanium frame locks with hardened steel lock face insert and over travel stop and a reversible 3D machine titanium deep carry clip that is mounted to the end. Each of the mitos comes with a tool that allows you to adjust the pivot, change the hardware, and take off the clip end here which is a hardened steel glass breaker end and you can reverse the clip and then it also comes with a flat end hardware and also a backup replacement set screw for that removable flipper tab and we've got these in three different variations of micarta a few different variations of titanium this one being an anodized bronze. 
They all have a satin finished blade. And they are all internally milled, so relatively lightweight for the size and material. And then we've also got a carbon fiber front, and then a titanium with tumbled black PVD on the blade and handles. And keep an eye out again for that full overview coming soon. And next up, we'll take a look at a new offering from K-Bar. They've got their USSF, or United States Space Force line. They made a USMC fighting knife and a breacher bar, all in this same theme. And this is their Corsair folder. We've got a gray-coated OS-8 stainless steel blade in a robust Tonto profile. Class reinforced nylon handles in space blue with black hardware, and then matching gray lock bar and clip. Dual thumb studs, so this is a fully ambidextrous knife, and it is easily operated with one hand. Nice snappy deployment, solid grip, and a nice texture on the handles. It is reminiscent of Stingray skin, it's not overly aggressive but provides plenty of traction in the hand. A great option for collectors and users alike. So if you want to grab a piece of history with a USSF themed knife, then any of those K-Bar options are a great choice. And keep an eye out for more USSF items coming soon. We've got some restock from Microtech, and I grabbed a few of my favorites while they're still in-house. we got the SOCOM Elite Automatic with an apocalyptic finished blade that's blasted and tumbled. This one has a blade of LMAX, which is a bowler stainless steel similar to S35VN. So great hard use working steel. Snappy deployment there. Black hard anodized aluminum with black traction inserts. We've got a tip down right hand only carry clip very solid knife this thing has a thick blade stock and a grind that can hold up to some serious use while still being tall enough to taper down to a thin slicing edge so great option for a full size tactical automatic that is still going to be a lightweight enough for daily carry next up we have the standard trodon in apocalyptic bronze so you've got the same blasted and tumbled finish with a bronze anodization and you can see the difference between the standard bronze on the satin flats there so a bit brighter and then the matte of the apocalyptic bronze on the double-edged blade matching proprietary hardware slide and clip and of course a nice snappy double action mechanism there and another similarly sized EDC, the UTX-85. This comes in the tactical variation with all black hardware, breaker and clip. And this one is a Tonto blade with two-tone black and 204P stainless steel, similar to Bowler's M390. Carpenter's 204P is going to be very corrosion resistant, hold a great edge, and be easy to maintain. And another OTF, or out the front automatic, we have the H and K here. And this is the mini incursion. This one is the clip point. Although the mini is actually a bit larger than the UTX-85. So still a very full size OTF. Tumbled clip point in 154CM. These are made by Hogue for H&K, so very high quality American production. Again, hard anodized aluminum in black, this time with Torx hardware. You've got a nice pronounced slide there with snappy double action mechanism. Subtle detail here is there is a little bit of fluting on the blade, and that's going to help to prevent material from getting in here and blocking up the mechanism. And then you've got a reversible clip with 
pronounced glass breaker pommel there and a nice deep carry stainless clip as well. We've got this in a few different variations. We've got a black with gray. We've also got a black on black. And then there is also a Tonto profile with the same black and gray color combo. And speaking of Hogue, we've also got some restock on the popular lightweight EDC DECA. This has the Able Lock, which is an upgraded version of the Axis Lock. So another spring mounted bar lock here. Nice ambidextrous operation, very smooth. Dual thumb studs, milled G10 for the handle scales in an open back construction. Reversible stainless steel clip for tip up carry. And we've got a 20 CV blade, this one in the clip point profile. 20 CV is again going to be similar to Bowler's M390 or Carpenter's 204P. So excellent corrosion resistance and edge retention and relative ease of sharpening. This is their modified Warncliffe blade. So you've got a saber grind here and a nearly full flat grind at the front. Nice prominent swedge with a reverse tanto point. This is the tumbled finish with the blue lava g -mascus for the handles, so a layered G10. And otherwise you're looking at the same construction and operation. So just different color and blade shape on this one. And we have several variants of the DECA in a limited supply while they last. And another great lightweight EDC in a high performance platform is the Gerber Fastball. This is their new cleaver version. This one is also in CPM 20 CV. We got a ball bearing pivot with flipper deployment. Nice snappy deployment there. This one has a tumbled blade with blue anodized aluminum handles, black backspacer, black stainless steel liner lock, and a tumbled clip. We've also got this in a black oxide coated blade and a coyote brown on the handles. So nice slim lightweight EDC with a high performance blade, flat ground in a cleaver profile, which has become very popular in the last couple of years. Still got a nice point while being a little safer in use than a standard clip point or drop point. Here you can see it compared to the DECA. So less likely to unintentionally pierce something with the point. And of course it optimizes the blade length and cutting edge. So you've got a nice cutting edge there for slicing tasks. You can also see here, nice thin blade stock that is going to slice very well. And then of course a slim profile for excellent carry. And both variations are currently available on sale for a limited time. And we've also got restock on new Phoenix flashlights, including the Tactical PD36R. This is a USB rechargeable flashlight powered by one 21700 battery. It's got a max output of 1600 lumens and tactical tail switch operation. So you can press lightly for momentary on, on low, or press fully and then cycle through the modes. Press and hold for strobe there. And you've got an LED indicator for the battery power. And this one is currently available in a buy one, get one option with the nice lightweight EDC keychain light here. The EO1 V2. And this is just your basic AAA powered where you twist for on and you can cycle through the three brightness modes as you can see there. So a great option for EDC carry with a tactical backup. And these are available while supplies last in a two for one package. And last but not least, we've got some restock from Medford Knife and Tools. So 
I grabbed a few of my favorites. Here we've got the Praetorian Slim. This is probably my favorite from Medford. A nice slim EDC in a similar size platform as the Paramilitary 2. We've got a nice thin blade stock here of S35VN with a tumbled finish on the flats and of course a machine satin on the grinds. We've got a dark violet anodized titanium for the handles, open back construction, a simple titanium pocket clip for right hand tip up only carry. You've got a glass breaker point here on the tang of the blade for use when closed. All satin hardware and of course this deploys via the dual fullers on the blade and as you can see the operation is nice and smooth and it's got a nice slim and compact footprint for daily or dress carry. So great option there for EDC from Medford Knife and Tool. Here in the middle we have a Praetorian Swift. This is their button lock auto version of the Praetorian platform. Again, S35VN in the same blade style. A bit thicker than the Slim Praetorian. You got a slide safety, a nice smooth automatic coil spring deployment, solid button lock. And the safety also does backup for the lock there. And this one has a dark blue anodized aluminum handle construction and a Medford style titanium pocket clip. Again, right hand tip up only on that. And last but not least, we've got the Smooth Criminal. This one has a black PVD coated blade, also S35VN on this one. We've got a dark red anodized handle, again in aluminum, button lock, aluminum backspacer with lanyard hole, and a nice slim clip there. And of course, this is a ball bearing pivot flipper with a nice snappy deployment. It's a bit more compact in design than the other two, but still very robust for extended daily use. Again, this is Tyler with GP Knives and your week 51 2020 weekly update. Thanks for watching. Stay safe and stay sharp. If you like what you've seen today and you'd like to see more, subscribe to our channel and like the video below and follow us on social media for updates on all new products.